my name is Allie and um, I want to welcome you to uh, my poodle paint along. Um, so I do live paint alongs here on my Facebook page um, every Monday at 5 Eastern. Um, I teach something a little bit different each week. Uh, we go through a series um, and right now we are kicking off a new series of dog paintings. Um, and I've been doing these paint alongs every week for about a year now. Um, and I actually took a few weeks off um, in July, in the beginning of August. Uh, I was traveling with my family and moving into my brand new studio, which I am now in. And I'm really excited to be finally um, here, not uh, working out of my home anymore. <laughs> if some of you have been following me for a while, you know that um, I've been displaced from my studio um, ever since COVID hit, so it's been a while. Um, hi, Donna. Um, yeah, so I am really excited. This is the actual first painting I am creating in my brand new studio, and you guys are here to join me for it, so I love it. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Marcella. Hi, Janine. Um, yeah, as you all are coming into the demo here, um, I would love for you to say hi in the comments. Let us know where in the world you are watching and painting from. Um, many of you watch these every week and I am just honored that you join me every week. Um, and a lot of you paint with me every week. So how this works is these demos are totally free to watch and enjoy and learn from. Um, but if you want to actually paint with me, I offer a download on my website, alliekstudio.com, uh, where you can get these outlines. I have a template that you can download and trace. Um, we always do an eight by 10 panel um, so you can get that on my website and you can actually go back and watch this video um, if you're just watching it now live you want to paint with me later you can totally do that um, and so you'll find that on the website and then there will be a link to the replay so you can come back and do this at your own pace but I love those of you who are painting with me live so make sure you tell me in the comments if you are painting live because you get extra points um, and then also, if you're painting live, make sure you post your painting in my group, Allie's Paint Friends. Um, okay, so let's get started, all right? Um, yeah, awesome, let's do it. I'm gonna bring in the camera, and I love all of you who are saying hello in the comments, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna make sure we can see the reference image and my painting, and I like to show you a little bit of my palette too. I, try to get it all in there. I think we've got it pretty good. Let me know if there's any part of it you can't see because sometimes um, Facebook will crop the video a little bit and so I want to make sure you can see the reference image. So let me know if you can't see the reference image but I think I've got it good now. Um, Deborah says, hope that cats will get equal time. All right, well, you know, I have a couple of cat commissions coming up, Deborah, so maybe I will be adding in some cats as well. Um, animals are fun. Um, I, uh, I myself am more of a dog person, but I, uh, I understand that people love their cats too. All right, so let's get started, okay. So as I mentioned, the outlines download, so I used transfer paper to transfer the outlines, and then I just painted over these outlines using a skinny script liner brush. Looks like this. Um, and I went over it with just a light purple, and I made this light purple from titanium white, alizarin crimson, and Payne's gray. So I like to do that just to cover up um, any of the um, the graphite lines. So this just kind of gives me a good way to get started. Um, and the way that I always uh, start off is just to start washing in the shadows. So I'm looking at my reference and I'm not worrying about the color at all. I'm going to just kind of compare light and dark and start finding some of the shadows. So I'm going to um, make a purple that I will make from alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. Alizarin crimson is kind of a burgundy color and Payne's gray is basically navy blue. 
Um, and I'm going to water this down quite a bit because uh, we want this to dry. This is just going to be a really thin wash that we're going to use to kind of build up the shadows. Um, and I always get questions about my palettes. So these are from Hobby Lobby and I like these because when the paint dries, you can just peel it out. So I never really clean them when they're wet and that's why you see some paint, old paint residue on here from some previous colors that I've mixed. Um, hi Robin, hi Anthony, hi Jan. Thank you guys all for joining me for this very first painting in my new studio. Okay, <laughs> I might say that a few times during the demo. I apologize if it gets old. All right, so I'm gonna kind of just start at the top left and I'm comparing that the background is darker than the dog. So I'm just gonna start building up some color in the background um, just so that this white dog here will start to stand out. So just kind of comparing which side of the line is light, which side is dark. Um, and I am using flat tip brushes, which I prefer. Um, and you'll notice how I'm holding the brush really far back. That allows me to stay loose, um, not get too hung up, and just kind of keep it moving so that I can work my way through this pretty quickly. Um, I know that these demos go quick if this is your first time watching one. Um, I'm going to paint this whole thing um, in an hour, so it's going to go quick, um, but don't feel like you have to paint it that quickly. So if you're painting with me live and you want to get a start on it and then you feel like maybe it's a little too fast, I totally get that. Don't worry about it. Just do what you can. Um, and then, like I said, you can come back and work on this at your own pace uh, when it's convenient for you. So just kind of continuing to wash in. It pretty much looks like all of the background is darker than the foreground. So I'm just kind of treating it that way. Um, but I don't have to bring this all the way out. I just want to make sure that it kind of hugs that edge to show that the dog is going to be light. Um, all right, so we got that much in. Now I'm going to start looking for some of the dark shapes in the dog. Um, so I can see that the whole nose is pretty dark. So in our next pass, we will come in and find the very darkest areas. So we'll push it a little darker inside the nostrils to kind of separate those. Um, but for this first pass, we're just gonna say, you know what, that's all a pretty dark shape. So we're gonna put that in. Hi, Caroline. You're watching today, painting tomorrow. Sounds good, I'm excited to see your piece. Um, okay, and then the eyes are also pretty dark. They've got a flash of highlight, but I'm just gonna put them in dark for right now and we'll pull that highlight out later. And I need to make a little bit more of my dark purple recipe. It doesn't matter if it's gonna match exactly um, to the purple that I had before because this is all going to get covered up. This is just our basic roadmap that we are starting with. So we're just going to fill in the whole dark eye there. But you can see how I can still see my outlines. So I'm not doing it so dark that I won't be able to see the outlines. I still want to be able to see where those shapes are so that I know where to put those highlights later on. Um, okay, and now probably the next uh, dark area that I see is the collar. So I'm gonna look for these dark shapes in the collar. And I think I'm gonna switch down to a smaller brush. So I was using my number five brush. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but now I think I wanna get a little smaller so I can get in there a little bit better. So I'm gonna switch to a number three. Um, and Hmm, I just noticed I missed an outline. There should be a line right here to show the edge of that piece of the collar. So if you are missing that, don't worry, just fill it in. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna skip over where there's this highlight reflection on the metal. I'm gonna let that be stay bright because I can see it's bright in my photograph. Um, and you might notice that this photograph looks a little bit different um, from just a regular photo. So I did some editing to this photo 
um, to kind of enhance some of the shadows and highlights to make the forms a little bit easier to see. Um, and it also kind of enhanced some of the colors a little bit. So I use an app called PixArt, um, and I like the geode filter in PixArt, but I also use uh, Photoshop and another app called Snapseed. I like that one too, it does some cool things. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna look for some shadows in the hair. Um, so I see kind of a dark shadow right here. See there's this chunk that there's kind of a dark shadow hugging around it. So by painting the dark shadows in, it makes that passive hair stand out as a highlight. I see this is dark here. So I'm looking at my lines here, comparing how they look um, to the shapes that are in my reference image and looking which side of the line is light, which side is dark. Um, and I should tell you guys, if you have any questions about my process here, um, you know, especially if you're new, uh, feel free to um, ask questions in the comments here. I am watching as I go, taking a look at what you guys are all saying, and I try to do my best to address any questions that you have um, during the demo, but if I miss it, then I always go back to and um, try to type in any answers I'm able to give you uh, about what I'm up to here, because I know this is a little bit of a different process than maybe what you've seen before. Um, so it might take a little bit of clarification or sometimes it just takes watching the process a few times for it to kind of make sense. Um, let's see, we've kind of got a dark shadow coming all the way down here. So just comparing light and dark. Actually, this is all kind of dark. You can see that I have a lot of water on my brush, so it's helping me to get this paint to flow. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, I'm using Golden Fluid Acrylics. Uh, I really like these paints. They have a lot of pigment, and they're pretty awesome. Um, and they are really smooth. So most people, I think, are probably familiar with heavy body paints that come in a tube like this. Um, but these are a little, they're different. So these are much thicker and the fluids, you can see they're like in these puddles, they're more liquid. So if you only have two paints, use what you have, but this is what I like. And I do have a list of my paint colors in the download. Julie says, could you use water-based acrylics to do the same as um, I'm not sure it says wear colors. So water-based, I'm not using watercolor. I am using water-based acrylics. That's what these are. And sorry I didn't mention what I was using at the beginning. I usually tell everybody at the beginning. It's golden fluid acrylics, which are water-based. Um, so I know this looks like watercolor in the beginning because I've got the paint so thin, but as I build up some color, you'll be able to see um, that we're using acrylics. All right, so I'm just gonna keep looking for the, which side of the line is light, which side is dark. So I see this little chunk right here is dark. This wedge right here is dark. And if you end up, you know, painting the wrong side, light or dark, don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, nobody's really going to know what the shapes are in the, the hair here. Um, so as long as you're kind of giving it the same sort of feel, um, it's going to be just fine. All right. I'm going to put a little shape in the tail here. And then I see there's kind of some dark shadows towards the center of the body here. So I'm just going to wash this in darker, start building up some color. Okay. And now I think we're going to come back with the next pass of the same color. Um, so let's see, Amanda said, just joined. How do you determine what colors to start with? 
Um, so Amanda, I actually always start with the same colors for my shadows. I'm using a mixture of alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. Um, and that just makes like a nice neutral um, purple. So it really doesn't even matter what I'm painting. That's kind of my recipe. So I'm gonna go back and make another puddle of this. This time I'm gonna have less water in it so that it's going to be a little bit darker, a little bit more opaque. And I'm going to come back and look for the darker values. So um, I can see it's pretty dark along the edge here um, in the background because it's butted up against the very light dog. So I'm going to push this a little bit darker along this edge. Just kind of building up those shadows. Um, Letitia said, I miss what you said about your new studio. So I'm in my new studio, Letitia. I'm super excited and I plan to tell, show you all more pictures and kind of show you the process as I get organized here. For right now, I just pushed all my junk out of the way and found a clean corner <laughs> to set up my easel um, so I could do this demo, but I cannot wait to start getting organized and also to start hosting some workshops here. Uh, very excited about that. So as I mentioned before, I'm just kind of going through, pushing these dark shadows, kind of separating um, the lights from the dark. So the collar is very dark. I'm gonna look for the darkest parts of the collar and just start putting those in. I'm not worrying, like I said, about color right now. I'm just looking at value, light versus dark and that collar's all pretty dark. Um, okay, and then in the nose, um, we're gonna paint in the nostrils pretty dark. Let's see, Deborah says, it's such a cute puppy, where'd you find the photo? So this is my neighbor's dog, this is Hetty Poodle. Um, and so I had Hetty pose for me. Uh, I took a whole bunch of photos of her and this one was really cute. So my neighbor has, um, four dog children and they have uh, two poodles and two border collies. Uh, they're all really cute. Uh, all right. And Hetty actually travels all over the world doing agility competitions. So she's a pretty amazing dog. And my kids love having the dogs next door because we will probably never have a dog, but um, they get to play with the dogs next door and not have to take care of them. So it's pretty much a win-win as a parent. <laughs> um, okay, so now I wanna put some darks in the eyes, but I'm gonna switch down to a smaller brush because I'm not gonna be able to get in there very tight. So I'm gonna switch down to my number one brush and mix up a little bit more of this dark tone and I'm gonna look for the darkest areas in the eyes. So it's dark kind of around the edges. And you'll notice I do get tighter on my brush as I'm getting into these detail areas. So yes, I'm very loose when I'm laying down the big shapes, um, but then on important stuff like the shape of the eyes, then I get pretty specific. Um, and that's the same thing when I paint portraits as well of people. Um, I want to make sure that I get those shapes in the eyes really accurate, because um, that's really important. All right, we got that. Uh, now I'm gonna go back to my larger brush and just kind of push the dark in the background a little bit more. So still using the same recipe of alizarin crimson and Payne's gray, um, but I just see I've got some pretty dark shapes in the background here. And I'll probably um, kind of simplify the background and maybe not put this chunk of, um, I think that's like the concrete wall or something. I probably won't put that in. I'll probably just you know make the background kind of blurry shapes because that will, Put the focus on the subject so I do that a lot in my portrait painting um, I guess that's one little tip that you know kind of works with everything is don't feel like you have to put the entire background that you see in exactly how you see it you know make your background 
work with your painting um, to put the focus where you want it to be. Um, okay, yeah, I think we're just about there. So this is um, kind of the value finding right now. And once we have this done, then we're going to do a complementary color underpainting wash. So I want all of this purple to be dry before I do my wash over it because otherwise um, the purple is going to lift up and contaminate the colors of my wash. Um, so normally I might step away for a few minutes um, because this is a live demo, I can't do that, but hopefully this is gonna dry. Um, and during, while well, we wait a minute or so, um, I'll just kind of explain what I'm going to do for the underpainting wash. Um, so let's see, what colors, complementary means opposite on the color wheel, okay? But I don't always do like the true opposite. Sometimes I kind of generalize and just make it work with um, how I want it to look basically. So Hetty is basically white, kind of like a, a warm white, kind of a golden peachy color. Um, and some of that color is exaggerated a little bit because of the filter that I put on it. But basically we're going to call her a warm color. So that means that I want to use a cool color for the underpainting. Um, so I think for the underpainting, I'm going to use blue. Um, so I'm going to use Phthalo Blue Green Shade, which is one of my favorite colors from Golden. It's, it's a very intense aqua, um, and you hardly need any of it at all. It's super, super strong. So I'm just gonna get my brush really wet here, and I'm going to barely touch the Phthalo Blue. And it's, it's so colorful that you just really don't need much at all. It's very staining. Um, and so I'm just gonna do a wash over all of that kind of golden white fur. I'm gonna skip over the eyes because the eyes, the nose, the eyes and the nose are going to be more of a cool tone in the end, and so I wanna start with those warm. So I'm really just gonna put this over the areas I see that are more of that warm golden white. And I'm starting with this really thin. I might come back and beef up the blue color a little bit, but I'm gonna start with it pretty thin to, for the first pass. And I'm using my number seven brush now, because um, I want to be able to get this paint to move um, and just kind of get through this quickly. And I'm not worried too much. You know, if I have some drips, I'm kind of spreading it out, but it's not really not really a problem. All right, need a little bit more. I'm gonna go over all of the fur or hair. Poodles have hair, right? Yes, that's why they have to be groomed. I had a cockapoo when I was a kid. Her name was Reba. It's the only dog I've ever had, just when I was a kid. And I like dogs. My older son is not a huge fan of dogs, so that's probably why we won't ever have one. Um, and I also don't need another living thing to take care of right now. <laughs> I'm kind of spent taking care of my two small humans. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm probably gonna let this dry and then come back with a little bit more color. Um, I'm gonna clean my brush off so it's not contaminated with that blue. And then I'm going to think about what color I want to do for the background. So the background is gonna be kind of green and blue tones. So that means we want to do a warm color for the background underpainting. Um, so I think what I would like to do is, um, I think down towards the bottom, I'm gonna use quinacridone magenta for my underpainting because it's one of my other favorite colors. 
uh, from Golden. So I'm just gonna wash this in and I'm not gonna worry about if I overlap some of that blue because it's totally fine and it's actually gonna look kind of cool if those colors kind of play together a little bit. So this is Quinacridone Magenta. My panel's moving a little bit. All right, and you know what? It started bleeding down the dog, but I'm not worried about it. That's gonna be cool. That's gonna be one of those little happy accidents. So that will demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about here. It's okay if they kind of get jumbled. moving on me I'm painting so fast um, let's see Beth said do you clean your brush off with water only I do Beth um, since these are water-based paints I usually just wash up with water um, all right now up towards the top maybe I'll put a little bit of that magenta in the background but then just to kind of change it up a little bit um, I'm going to use a little bit of pyrrol red light which is more of like an orangey red um, just I think it'll be fun to kind of have a different red tone up there which is more of like a warm red whereas the magenta was a little bit more of a cool red all right so now um, we want to put an underpainting where the nose, the mouth, and the eyes are. And I mentioned before how that is going to be cool in the end. So I think we'll use this warm red to start out with in those areas. I'll wash this in with the pyrrol red. And then we'll build our cool tones on top of that. So the red eyes might look a little crazy for a little while, um, but it's okay all gonna be okay sometimes I have people doubting why I'm doing this process but I have to assure them it's okay I don't know why I put that bit of red there don't worry about it <laughs> don't copy me on that if you did it's okay all right so this is our underpainting now we want the underpainting again we want this whole layer to be dry before we start layering any colors on top of it so I'm just going around and I'm going to catch any drips um, just to get those to dry quickly um, and then we'll start adding some color on top um, actually I said I was going to go back and darken that blue a little bit so I think I'll do that because now that first pass of blue is dry so I'm going to go back to my my phthalo blue green shade and I'm going to look for the darker areas and just kind of give those a little bit more of this blue color just to push those a pinch darker in the areas where I know that the painting is going to be a little bit darker. Um, and like I said, how I don't always do like the true opposite everywhere, the true opposite color. Um, I like to usually only have maybe three underpainting tones. So if I went through and did like the exact opposite of every single item here, um, it would just get too busy for the underpainting. So usually I like to limit my underpainting to maybe three different colors. Um, and that also just kind of makes, it makes everything go a little bit quicker too. We don't need to have so many different colors for the underpainting. Um, all right, I think that's good. Now, let's all just hope that this will dry really quick. Um, Anne is asking what medium. So right now, Anne, um, I don't know if you mean like what materials I'm using golden fluid acrylics, but I'm going to start, I was just thinning my paint with water, but now that the underpainting is done, I'm going to start thinning my paint with a glazing medium. So I'm using Liquitex glazing medium and I like kind of a satin finish because this comes in different finishes. Uh, but you can use any brand of glazing medium. I'm not picky about that. So we're going to start thinning our paint now in this next step with the glazing medium. 
Deborah says, why not wipe out a handheld, why not whip out a handheld hair dryer? Yes, I do sometimes. I just don't want to, uh, you know, have you guys all listen to that while I'm doing this. And this is just about dry, but that's a great idea if you're doing this on your own. Um, okay, cool. Well, let's, let's start putting some of the actual color on here. All right. Um, so we are going to start with pulling out some of the white highlights in this pup here. So we're going to make our white, um, it's going to be a warm white that we will make from titanium white. Um, and I'm gonna warm it up using a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little bit of Pyrrole Red Light. Um, I need some more titanium white. I'm gonna need to grab a whole bunch more. Oh, my bottles are doing that thing where the little hole gets plugged. And usually I keep like a nail or something around that I can poke it with, but since I moved, I don't know where my nail is that I poke it with. <laughs> okay, so we're warming this white up with Pyrrole Red Light, Hansi Yellow Opaque, and now I'm gonna put some glazing medium in there to thin it out um, so that we can still let some of that blue underpainting show through. And I'm using my number five brush now. Um, and yep, and these are acrylics, that's right. So they are water-based acrylics. Okay, so I'm looking for these highlights. Now, it's really important if this is one of your first times painting with me, um, it's really important to not cover up all of that blue underpainting. It's very, very easy to do. Those of you that paint with me all the time know how easy this is. Um, but we really want to leave little bits and pieces of it kind of poking through because it's going to just look more interesting. Um, it's going to give the painting just kind of some movement. Um, and we can always come back and cover up more of that blue. But in these early stages where we're just starting to lay down color, we want to be really cautious of not covering up all that blue underpainting. So you want to kind of leave little windows of it poking around. And again, I'm just kind of starting to pull out the highlights. And I'm not like pulling out every highlight. I'm basically looking for, I would say like the brightest 50% of the the white fur and that's what I'm pulling out now um, and I will make this highlight I'll make it um, lighter in some later stages this is just kind of like we're starting in the middle and we're working our way towards a little bit brighter so I'm just kind of moving my way around the whole piece if I stay in one place too long um, that will probably result in me covering up too much of the blue. So I'm going to kind of try to work my way around the whole piece so that I don't do that. Um, that also helps me to not get too hung up on the details. We're just kind of looking for general shapes. Um, let's see, Anne says, I have two poodles. I love how you captured the texture of the fur. Well, thank you. Um, I've got a ways to go, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I would love to see your paintings of your poodles after you do this one. I hope that it will uh, maybe give you a little insight on how to create them. And, you know, another thing to think about is we don't have to do every single hair and every single curl. We're basically just looking for, like, what is the most important um, areas to include that are going to give us, like, the overall look of the hair and the shape of the dog. Because if we try to capture everything, then you almost capture nothing. You know, it's like if you put too much emphasis on every single thing, then there's not enough emphasis on the things that are important. And that's, you know, also just kind of like a life thing too, right? <laughs> Can't do everything, although some of us try. <laughs> um, yeah, 
<laughs> All right. I feel like I'm kind of like carving these shapes out of the background. And see how it's kind of neat how here where we're layering over that little bit of pink that came through? I feel like it has a different look as we layer on top of the pink, so it's kind of fun how that poked its way through. looking around I'm squinting at my piece to see if there are some more light areas that I really want to get in squinting is so helpful um, when you're just trying to figure out like what is the most important um, to include and I've heard some of my students who maybe wear glasses say they'll take their glasses off um, To kind of blur the reference and see what they need to do. Um, I don't wear glasses So I can't do that trick, but it sounds really great <laughs> Okay, so I think we kind of found well, maybe there's a few more little bright ones here Okay, so we found pretty much the brightest highlights. Now I'm going to take it just a notch darker and work my way towards some of the shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the pyrrole red light, a little bit more of the Hansa yellow opaque. So this is gonna make it kind of more of like a peachy tone. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit more glazing medium in there too because by adding the glazing medium I'm thinning the paint out which is going to let more of the underpainting come through and that underpainting is pretty dark in some of these shadows. So I'm going to kind of look for some of these warmer tones that I'm seeing um, in my reference. And it's, it's really neat how this kind of peachy tone um, contrasts that blue that we put down. I really like how those look together. Um, white animals are really fun to paint because there's so much unexpected color in white. Um, and you can really have a lot of fun with it. Um, like if you wanna push it light or dark uh, you can really do a lot with it. And also, I think one area where people sometimes struggle with painting things that are white is they're afraid to put them dark enough. But, you know, a white object that is in shadow is going to be very dark. Um, so that's, you know, a good tip for when you're painting anything white. Remember that the areas of shadow you really need to push dark enough you need to push them as dark as what you see in that reference image and don't be afraid to do that just paint paint it as dark as you see it so i'm still just using this um, combination of white and pyrrole red light and hansa yellow opaque Um, Amanda asks, why use glazing medium over water? So the glazing medium kind of keeps the body of the um, recipe, like whereas water gets kind of runny. Um, and the glazing medium just kind of has more of like a, a rich quality to it. Um, so you could do the whole thing just thinning with water, but um, I like to use the glazing medium. I feel like it has just a, a prettier color as you layer. It also dries a pinch slower when you use the glazing medium, um, so some people like that too, but it's, it's not a whole lot slower. All right, so now, um, 
Okay, now I want to go in and pull out the brighter highlights. So again, we kind of started in the middle, we pushed our way a bit darker, now we're actually gonna push our way back to the bright highlights. Um, so I'm going to go in with the same recipe, but now it's going to have more white than it did when we first started. Um, so I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of white in with what I already had. Um, and I'm not gonna add any more medium to it because I want this to be a little bit more opaque. So I want this, I wanna make sure that this color is gonna be brighter than my first pass. And I might have to try more than once. I'm just gonna mix up the color and then I'm gonna lay it on top and see, is it brighter? Yeah, it's brighter, but it's not quite bright enough, so I'm gonna add more white. And I'm just gonna kind of drop this into those places that look the very brightest. And I'm not going to be afraid to kind of let these brush strokes just kind of stand out. I don't need to blend them into what's there. I'm just gonna lay it down. Uh, it's pretty bright right here along the back. Got some bright dabs along the tail here. along this edge, along the edge here. So this brighter tone is kind of wrapping around the figure because the light is coming in from the sides. So that's why we have more of a highlight around the edges. And you can see how it's just building up these different tones. It's giving it more dimension and more structure. Deborah asked, does it dry with a sheen? So I usually use satin finish, so that has less of a sheen. It's kind of more similar to the sheen of the paints. I think they do have a matte finish glazing medium. Um, there's also a light gloss and semi-gloss, so it, it just depends on what you buy. My brush kind of split on me there. All right. I think I want to keep moving um, before I get too hung up on this color. I want to get some of the other colors in because then everything will start to make a little bit more sense. All right. So let's put some green in the background because that's gonna kind of just like anchor this whole thing. Um, so um, I'm always, always really careful to make my greens more muted because I feel like it's easy to get greens like really carried away. Um, so I always dull my greens down with some red. Um, so I'm gonna make kind of like this olive, light yellowy olive green that I see down here. Um, I'm gonna use phthalo green blue shade. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, is this spot dry? Yeah. And then I'm gonna add some yellow, quite a bit of yellow, Hansa yellow opaque. And then I'm going to use pyrrole red light to dull it down because otherwise we'd have this like really ugly green that would just give you a headache. Um, and so natural grass is going to be a lot more dull um, than what you might think. Um, and I'm adding some glazing medium into it, which is going to allow that magenta to kind of shine through. <coughs> um, and I went to my number five brush and I'm just gonna start popping this into the background and I'm gonna be really careful to not cover up all of my fun magenta because I love that color. Um, so I'm making sure I leave some windows of that color. I want these brush strokes to not feel calculated. I want them to feel very kind of random but sometimes in order for them to feel random you have to calculate them which sounds crazy but 
our brains have a tendency to like try to make things look perfect if we don't stop our brain from doing that. Um, and you'll notice I'm also doing some pretty big fat brush strokes. Um, and I think, I think I'm gonna carry a little bit of it up here and then I might adjust my color a bit just to bring in some different green. So now up at the top, I'm gonna go a little bit more minty green. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to my recipe and a little bit more of that phthalo green, um, phthalo green blue shade. So that's gonna make it look a little bit more of a minty cool tone. All right, I'm gonna drop some of that in. Uh, Maybe, I'm just gonna put a couple strokes of this and then I think I wanna go like more minty. Okay, I just did a little bit of that. Now I'm gonna clean my brush off and I think I'm gonna make more of like a mint that's gonna be a true mint color. Um, so for that, I'm going to use just the phthalo green blue shade in white which is, makes a really pretty mint tone. I need a little more white. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of glazing medium in there to thin it out. And I'm just gonna drop. So this is, it's pretty bright, but it looks really cool, I think, against some of those red tones in the background. So. Just kind of putting this bright bit up towards the top, it kind of gives like a feeling like there's some, you know, lighter air up there behind it. So usually my backgrounds, I do darker on the bottom and a little bit lighter on the top. So yeah, I like a little bit of that in the background. All right, let's keep going. Um, so let's put some color in the eyes and the nose. So I'm gonna switch down to my little number one brush because I wanna get more detailed now. Um, and I'm going to first find my darkest darks again. I'm gonna find the areas that look pretty much black. And I'm going to mix up my Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray that I used at the beginning. But now I'm not gonna have any water in it. And when you put these two together pretty solid, they make a dark purple that looks almost black. I never buy black paint. I always make a dark purple because it's prettier. Black paint is kind of ugly, so. All right, and then I'm gonna get in real specific and I'm gonna find those nostrils and push those nice and dark. And I'm like being really careful about the shape that I'm doing because I mentioned this before you want to get it just right I'm going to look for these dark areas by the mouth drop that in just right um, and then down at the bottom of the nose it's also pretty dark I kind of brace my hand with my pinky finger here my hands kind of shaky for some reason A little dark in there kind of squinting to see if I've got the dark areas dark enough okay and then I'm gonna go up into the eyes and look for those very darkest areas I'm gonna zoom in this is why I like to paint from screen because I can zoom in and see my shapes a lot better makes it so much easier I always tell people never ever ever paint from a printed photo always paint from a screen you can see everything so much better even if you only have a printed photo i would say scan that printed photo and then look at it on the screen because it's still going to be just so much easier for you than trying to do a printout where you can't see it big enough and you just can't see the colors uh, accurately. All 
Okay, so it's kind of darkest around the edges, and then there's like this flash of blue highlight, but behind that flash of blue highlight, the center of the dog's eyes are black. So I'm also kind of placing that. I'm gonna zoom back out, and I'm gonna zoom in on the collar here to put some of those dark tones in. So darkest areas of the collar would be along the edge here. And over here. So we're only putting a little bit of the collar in there because the hair is kind of overlapping it. Got a dark shadow there. And I'm going to be kind of dainty about how I put in this little collar here. It's kind of dark at the edge. Don't feel like you have to make this like a perfect circle because it's not a perfect circle. It's on an angle, so it's not going to be perfectly circular shaped. Less is more when you do those little kind of detailed things. If you try to get them too specific, it usually kind of ruins it. All right, so now we get our darks in. Now I'm gonna zoom back in on the face here and I want to put kind of the mid-tone highlights in. I'm gonna do that before I put the brightest highlights in. So the mid-tone highlights, um, I'm going to make kind of a bluish purple. Um, and normally I would use permanent dark violet, but this color is unfortunately almost impossible to find right now from Golden. They're having an issue with getting the pigments they need for this. I've been told it's coming back, but right now it's hard to find, so I'm not going to use it in my demo because I know many of you are also waiting on it. Um, so we're going to make a purple um, using quinacridone magenta. And I'll do it right here. And I'll use um, a little bit of, let's see, phthalo blue green shade, which will make a nice purple. Um, and I'm gonna dull this down with a little bit of Payne's Gray as well. Um, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of white in there. Need a little more of my phthalo blue. Okay, so I'm gonna use this to kind of, uh, I think I need to go a little bit lighter. I need to add a little more white in there. Make that stand out a little more. I want this to be a highlight. I want it to be lighter than the darks that we just put in. I may even need to add a little bit more white, but let's see. I'm gonna go a bit lighter still. This is just my first kind of mid-tone highlight, like I mentioned. So I kind of paint in these steps. I like work my way towards light and dark by building steps. We're gonna put a little bit of this in the shadow here under the mouth. All right. We get some of this along the edge of the eye and then we'll put a little in the eye there just to build up kind of a little more shadow. Okay, now I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter. You see the top of the nose is lighter and a little bit more blue. Um, so I'm going to just add a little more white to it and a pinch more of that phthalo blue. We're gonna drop that highlight in. I think it needs to even go a little bit lighter. So just like I said, don't be afraid to paint white areas dark if they're in shadow. Don't be afraid to paint dark things like this black nose. Don't be afraid to paint it pretty light if it's got a highlight on it. It's kind of the same sort of rule. Um, we've got a little highlight under each nostril. And then I'm gonna use the same color to put that highlight on each of the 
eyes here and I'm going to make this highlight get brighter but I'm just like I said I'm just kind of building my way towards it so we're just gonna start to put that little bit of highlight on using this kind of purple tone uh, Christine says I've inspired her to paint her dog awesome Christine I would love to see your painting of your dog and I hope that um, hope that these paint alongs do inspire you guys to kind of do your own personal pieces all right so while I have this this highlight of purple on my brush I notice that I see this color kind of under the chin there so I'm going to just drop this in under the nose and under the mouth because I see this color in the shadows So whenever I have a color on my brush and I'm like, you know, I see that in a few other places, I just drop it in right away. Um, it kind of gives unity to my piece and it also helps me to paint a little more quickly because I'm kind of getting something done while I've already got the color. You know, I see some of it under the eye here, a little bit in the shadow there. All right, now I wanna brighten up that flash of highlight on the eyes. So I'm gonna clean my brush off, and my little number one brush is not playing along very nicely with me. It keeps splitting, so I might need to look for another one. It's so important to have a brush that's not gonna split, and that's why I buy new brushes all the time. And I buy cheap ones, but I just always like to switch and have a new one so that I can get a nice, clean point. I can't find one right now, so I'm gonna have to use this one. Okay, so the blue highlight, um, I'm going to make that with titanium white and a little bit of phthalo blue green shade. And I'm gonna make this pretty bright. This is that same color that we used for our underpainting, um, but now I have white mixed into it rather than just watering it down. And so I'm gonna Create that flash. Ooh, I didn't put enough white in. I need more white. That blue is so strong, it just like takes over. I want this to be really bright. All right. So one of my friends just messaged me and said that she can hear an echo in my demo. I have to apologize, um, you guys. This is my first uh, time doing a paint along from my new studio. And so because it's like pretty much an empty cube right now with a bunch of boxes in it, we've got not the greatest sound um, going on with the echo here. So I am gonna look into what I can do about um, Maybe using a microphone next time. I'll see what I can do, but I'm sorry it's not perfect. Today was kind of a, a taking a chance here to make sure this would all work. Um, but luckily, my Wi-Fi is working here, so that's good. Um, all right, I'm going to use a little bit of this blue um, in some of these hairs down by the mouth here as they kind of overlap. Um, the mouth so these are kind of in shadow I'm just gonna bring some of this blue color down I think I like a little bit of that okay then I'm gonna zoom back out take a look at it see what else I want to do um, I think I wanna use a little more of this blue and white tone in some of the fur, just to kind of give it a few cool tones. So I said how the fur was mostly warm, but we do have some cool tones kind of poking around. And I'm gonna catch some of those kind of at the edges here. I'm gonna put a little more white in it. Maybe put a few little bits of it along the edge up here. So this is just that phthalo blue in titanium white here. I'm 
just kind of dropping this along the edges. I like seeing a little bit of that, kind of jumping around by the edge. Okay, now I want to put a slightly darker um, tone in the hair. So we kind of put like this mid-tone, but I want to push it a little bit darker because I see some dark warm tones kind of underneath the edges of the ears there and we really haven't gone quite dark enough yet. Um, so I'm going to go in and make that color with titanium white and we're gonna use some pyrrole red light, Hansa yellow opaque, but now I want to brown it just a little bit. So I'm going to add just a pinch of Payne's gray in there that will brown it out a little bit. So again, it's pyrrole red light, Hansa yellow opaque, titanium white, and um, Payne's, or yeah, Payne's gray. Sorry, <laughs> I had to think about it there. Um, and I'll put a little bit of glazing medium in there too. So this is kind of like a dirty peach, a dark, dirty peach. Um, and I'm gonna drop this into some of these shadows. Yeah, you see this warm tone in the shadows down there. That looks better. Yeah, this just kind of warms it all up a little bit. We see a little bit of that in the tail too maybe, and definitely in the center here, we see some of those warm tones. And this will give a little more texture um, to the hair here. Just kind of pushing those shadows a little bit darker. And we've got some of this darker tone kind of around the eye too. Definitely. All right, where else do I want to put it? Maybe I'll do a little bit. It gets darker right there. Gave it some pop. All right. I know we're getting we're getting a little bit over. We're just over six, but I'm gonna just take a little bit more time because I always like to just kind of put some of those finishing touches on at the end. Um, so I want to come back with straight white. I'm gonna clean my brush up really well. Um, and I'm going to get myself some clean white that's not contaminated and I'm going to come in and find the very brightest areas. So I'm going to just dip straight into that white. I don't want any glazing medium on it because I want this to be really opaque and I'm looking for the brightest spots. So that's going to be up at the top here. And I'm not blending this in, I'm just laying it down so that it will really stand out. Got some bright areas here. And it's pretty bright right there. So these little pops of like the brightest tone towards the end, that's really what, you know, gives it the most dimension. Oh, we didn't do much in the collar. You know, let's put this bright highlight on the collar where we've got these bits of the metal buckle. We're just gonna use this white to build that up. We don't need to have a ton of dimension there um, and then we'll use some of this white to kind of indicate the little cross on the collar but I'm not going to do it too perfectly um, and then I'm going to switch to my smaller brush so that I can put a little color in the collar um, so I'm going to go in with my pyrrole red light I'm going to put a little bit of quinacridone magenta in it which will cool it down a pinch and just drop a little of that red color in doesn't have to be fully, you know, making that cross just perfect. It's actually better not to have it just perfect because that would look like we're trying too hard. 
Um, and then maybe I'll put a little bit of this red tone, this magenta and red, this magenta and pyrrole red. We're gonna put a little white in there and I'm gonna use this in the collar. The collar is not quite this pink, but I think it will look kind of fun with the pink background to add a little bit of this more pink highlight on the collar. We'll just kind of tie it together. So kind of talking about like before when I said, you know, make it work with what you're doing, it's kind of going along the same lines. I'm gonna make the collar a little bit more magenta just to make it tie in with my painting. Um, and then just kind of looking through where else I want to add a little bit of color or tweak it at all. I think I want those highlights on the eyes to be a bit brighter. So I'm going to go back to my white and phthalo blue recipe and now it's going to be mostly white, just barely touch the phthalo blue. Almost completely white. And I'm just gonna push that highlight a little bit further on the eye. I'm not gonna fill in the whole thing with this brightest highlight. I'm just gonna pick a small part of it and just push that a little bit more. Um, you know, I think the top of the nose needs to be a bit brighter too. So I'm gonna use some of that blue and white mixture and just drop some of that on top of the nose too. Maybe I'll put a tiny bit of quinacridone magenta in there to make it a little more purple. We're just gonna push that highlight a little bit brighter. We've got a little highlight under the nose there, maybe just on the left side. Yeah, I think I like that. I'm gonna use a little bit of it right there. Okay. All right, now, what else do I wanna add before we call this done? Oh, we could put a little bit of this purple just to give some dimension on that buckle. That would probably be good. Kind of ignored that. And I guess we could use it for the top of that red piece too. like kind of a bright orange because I think that'll just be kind of fun. We've got all these bright colors going and I think it would kind of break it up a little bit just to put like some really kind of piercing orangey white tones. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get another brush to work better for me. Um, let's try One. All right, so I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Opaque. I'm going to get some fresh color because my Hansa Yellow is kind of contaminated. So Hansa Yellow Opaque and let's see, a tiny bit of Pyrrole Red Light and some white. Um, just a little bit of white though. It's going to be mostly that Hansa Yellow Opaque and Pyrrole Red light and I think we'll just drop some of these bright orange tones in just for the fun of it um, so I kind of see a little bit of that right there oh, you know I don't like that one that made it look like eyebrows just kind of feels like this little glow around the dog makes these wild colors make a little more sense maybe. So I think one thing to think about when you paint an animal is having a loose edge because if you have like a really hard edge um, in too many places, it makes it feel less, um, you know, like f a form, you know, the animal, the edge of it's going to be furry. So 
You don't want it to be too much of a hard edge. All right, I like that. I have one more idea that I wanna do and then we're gonna call this one done. Um, because I like this mint tone up at the top, I just wanna bring a little bit of that down towards the bottom. So that mint color I made with um, phthalo green blue shade and titanium white. So I'm just gonna bring a little bit of that kind of aqua color further down. I'm gonna add a little bit of glazing medium. And I think it's gonna be kind of neat just to break up some of these warm tones. So I'm just gonna plop a little bit of it kind of along the edge just for fun. This is totally up to you. Like the colors that you put in your background yeah, that's all you. You got to do what you like. I do what I like, unless I'm doing it for a client and then I do what they like. Um, <laughs> such is life. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that just gives it a little more movement in the background. I should probably stop well in the head before I get too carried away. All right, so here is my painting of Petty Poodle. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you guys for joining me um, for this piece. I really appreciate it and I would love to see the pieces that you create um, when you guys either do this on your own or if you painted with me, please make sure you share your paintings um, in my group, Allie's Paint Friends. If you're not in that group, you can find a link to it on my page. Um, it's a free group to be in. Um, and also I would love if you would share this demo. So if you have enjoyed this demo, would you hit that share button right now and just share it on your personal page um, and tell people that, you know, something fun to watch. I will be here again next week, Monday at 5 Eastern. Um, I'm going to try to get my sound worked out a little bit better, just kind of dealing with the new studio and getting set up. So hopefully I can sort that out a little bit more. I appreciate you guys bearing with me here. Um, and yeah, have a great evening. Happy painting. Can't wait to see your pieces. All right. Bye guys.